Chapter Eleven of He Can Who Thinks He Can by Orison Sweat Marden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Happy? If not, why not? We have seen many examples during the past few months of the failure of wealth to produce happiness. We have seen that a fortune without a man behind it does not stand for much. The X rays of public investigation have revealed some ghastly spectacles of a number of rich men who were in positions of great responsibility and trust at the beginning of the recent financial panic some have committed suicide others have died from the effects of the disgrace which they had brought upon themselves and their families and still others have suffered tortures not so much because of the wrongdoings as from the fear of disclosure a few months ago these men were supposed to possess the things which made men happy they had what all the world is seeking so strenuously money they lived in palatial homes and were surrounded with luxuries and yet the moment misfortune came what they called happiness fled as though it had the wings of a bird these men felt secure because they had that which most people are struggling so hard to get they had supposed themselves so firmly entrenched in the wherewithal of life but so buttressed by their solid investments that nothing could shake them but almost in the twinkling of an eye their foundations slipped from under them their reputations vanished and instead of being the big men they thought they were they not only found out that they were nobodies but also that their happiness had flown with their reputations happiness is not such a transit visitor as that if these men had had the genuine article no panic could have shaken it no fire burned it out no ocean swallowed it up real happiness is not a fluttering fly-away unreality it is not superficial it does not live in things it does not depend upon money it inheres in character in personality it consists in facing life the right way and no one who faces it the wrong way no matter how much money he may have can ever be happy the trouble with many of the men who went down in the panic was that they put the emphasis upon the wrong thing man is built upon the plan of honesty of rectitude the divine plan when he perverts his nature by trying to express dishonesty chicanery and cunning of course he cannot be happy the very essence of happiness is honesty sincerity truthfulness he who would have real happiness for his companion must be clean straightforward and sincere the moment he departs from the right she will take wings and fly away what a pitiable thing it is to see the human race chasing the dollar material things trying to extract happiness to squeeze joy out of money alone how little people realize that the very thing they are hunting lives in themselves or nowhere that if they do not take happiness with them they may hunt the earth over without finding it happiness is a condition of mind it is a fundamental principle and he who does not understand the principle cannot possibly be happy all the misery and the crime of the world rest upon this failure of human beings to understand the principle that no man can really be happy until he harmonizes with the best thing in him with the divine and not with the brute no one can be happy who tries to harmonize his life with his animal instincts the god the good in him is the only possible thing that can make him happy real happiness cannot be bribed by anything sordid or low nothing mean or unworthy appeals to it there is no affinity between them founded upon principle it is as scientific as the laws of mathematics and he who works his problem correctly will get the happiness answer there is only one way to secure the correct answer to a mathematical problem and that is to work in harmony with mathematical laws it would not matter if half the world believed there was some other way to get the answer it would never come until the law was followed with the utmost exactitude it does not matter that the great majority of the human race believe there is some other way of reaching the happiness goal the fact that they are discontented restless and unhappy shows that they are not working their problem scientifically we are all conscious that there is another man inside of us that there accompanies us through life a divine silent messenger that other higher better self which speaks from the depths of our nature and which gives its consent its amen to every right action and condemns every wrong one 
men and women in all times have tried to bribe this constant monitor to purchase its approval to silent it in nervous excitement to drown it in vicious pleasure with drink and with drugs but all in vain men in every age have disregarded its warning have tried in every possible way to get away from its tormenting reproofs when they have done wrong but no amount of dissipation or excitement has ever been able to silence its voice it always continues to give its unbiased unbribed approval or disapproval to whatever we do there is nothing in which people deceive themselves so much as in the pursuit of happiness there is only one way to find it that is by obeying the laws upon which we are built we are constructed along the lines of truth and justice and we cannot reach felicity by disobeying these the very laws of our nature so long as we continue to do evil to get money by unfair means by robbing others or taking advantage of them so long as our ambition is to get rich anyway we can never attain true happiness because we are going in the wrong direction we are introducing discord into our natures encouraging the very opposite to what we are seeking it is just as impossible for a person to reach the normal state of harmony while he is practicing selfish grasping methods as it is to produce harmony in an orchestra with instruments that are all jangled and out of tune to be happy we must be in tune with the infinite in us in harmony with our better selves there is no way to get around it the idea that we can practice wrong in our vocations in our dealings with men or in our pleasures and then periodically seek forgiveness in our prayers or through our churches the idea that a man can do wrong and be forgiven without remedying the wrong or without forsaking the sin has done more harm than almost any other thing in civilization a clear conscience a clean life the elimination of selfishness jealousy envy and hatred are necessary to all high enjoyment one trouble with many of us is that we try to make happiness too complicated an affair but happiness really flees from complication ceremony and pretense nature has fixed her everlasting edict against complicated living you can never force pleasure it must be natural it must come from sane living real happiness is so simple that most people do not recognize it they think it comes from doing something on a big scale from a big fortune or from some great achievement when in fact it is derived from the simplest the quietest the most unpretentious things in the world our great problem is to fill each day so full of sunshine of plain living and high thinking that there can be no commonness or unhappiness in our lives little kindnesses pleasant words and helps by the way trifling courtesies and encouragements duties faithfully done unselfish service work that we enjoy friendships love and affection all these are simple things yet they are what constitute happiness the great sanitariums the noted springs of the world are crowded with rich people sent there by their physicians to get rid of the effects of complicated living they tried to force their pleasures and came to grief not long ago i dined in the home of a very rich man and it took two hours and a half to serve the dinner there were thirteen courses made up of the richest kinds of food and many of them absolutely incompatible with one another in addition to this there were seven kinds of wine think of any one being healthy or happy living upon such a diet what are the enjoyments of the average rich is there anything more vapid insipid unsatisfying than the chasing after that infinite mysterious something which they call happiness that will o' the wisp which is always beckoning them on but ever eluding their grasp that rainbow which recedes as they approach they may enjoy the titillation of the nerves for a moment the temporary excitement and exhilaration which comes from even vicious pleasures but what of it all it is only animal enjoyment nothing but regret disappointment and disgust follow there is within every normal person a strong desire to do something and to be something in the world and every idler knows that he is violating the fundamental demand of his nature that he is really cheating himself out of a very sacred prize the getting of which would mean more to him than everything else in the world i have talked with idle rich young men who said they knew that it was all wrong for them to refuse to do their part of the world's work 
that it was a mistake for them not to enter into the activities of life and struggle for a prize which the creator had fitted them to take but that the paralyzing effect of not being obliged to work had undermined their inclination recently a rich young man was asked why he did not work i do not have to he said do not have to has ruined more young men than almost anything else the fact is nature never made any provision for the idle man vigorous activity is the law of life it is the saving grace the only thing that can keep a human being from retrograding activity along the line of one's highest ambition is the normal state of man and he who tries to evade it pays the penalty in deterioration of faculty in paralysis of efficiency do not flatter yourself that you can be really happy unless you are useful happiness and usefulness were born twins to separate them is fatal it is impossible for a human being to be happy who is habitually idle as it is for a fine chronometer to be normal when not running the highest happiness is the feeling of well-being which comes from one who is actively employed in doing what he was made to do carrying out the great life purpose patterned in his individual bent the practical fulfilling of the life purpose is to man what the actual running and keeping of time are to the watch without action both are meaningless there is no tonic like that which comes from doing things worth while there is no happiness like that which comes from doing our level best every day everywhere no satisfaction like that which comes from stamping our superiority putting our royal trademark upon everything which goes through our hands man was made to do things nothing else can take the place of achievement in his life real happiness without achievement of some worthy aim is unthinkable one of the greatest satisfaction in this world is the feeling of enlargement of growth of stretching upward and onward no pleasure can surpass that which comes from the consciousness of feeling one's horizons of ignorance being pushed farther and farther away of making headway in the world of not only getting on but also of getting up happiness is incompatible with stagnation a man must feel his expanding power lifting tugging away at a lofty purpose or he will miss the joy of living the discords the bickerings and divorces the breaking up of rich homes and the resorting to all sorts of silly devices by many rich people in their pursuit of happiness prove that it does not dwell within them that happiness does not abide with low ideals with selfishness idleness and discord it is a friend of harmony of truth and beauty of affection and simplicity multitudes of men have made fortunes but have murdered their capacity for enjoyment in the process how often we hear the remark he has the money but cannot enjoy it a man can have no greater delusion than that he can spend the best years of his life coining all of his energies into dollars neglecting his home sacrificing friendships self-improvement and everything else that is really worth while for money and yet find happiness at the end if a man coins his ability his opportunities into dollars and during all the years he is accumulating wealth neglects the cultivation of the only faculties which are capable of appreciating the highest happiness he cannot effectively revive his atrophied brain cells his enjoyment after he makes his money must come from the exercise of the same faculties which he has employed in making it he cannot undo the results of a life habit after he retires from business if you have not kept alive your ability to appreciate the beautiful the good and the true you will be as surprised to find that it has left you as darwin was when in the middle of life he discovered that all at once that he had lost his power to appreciate shakespeare and music we ought to be able to get a good living even to make fortunes and yet have a jolly good time every day of our lives this idea of being a slave most of the time and of only occasionally enjoying a holiday is all wrong every day should be a holiday a day of joy and gladness a day of supreme happiness and it would be if we lived sanely if we knew the secret of right thinking and normal living isn't it strange that so few people ever think of making happiness a daily duty that they should put this everlasting emphasis upon their vocations on money-making and let the thing for which they really live come incidentally or without planning the making of a life should be emphasized infinitely more than the making of a living 
few people ever learn the art of enjoying the little things of life as they go along yet it is the little everyday enjoyments and satisfactions that count most in a lifetime almost every person i know is living in anticipation not in reality he's not actually living the life he has always looked forward to or expected to attain but is just getting ready to live just getting ready to enjoy it when he gets a little more money a little better house a little more of the comforts of life a little more leisure a little more freedom from responsibility he will then be ready to enjoy life it is a rare thing to find a person who can truthfully say i'm really living this is the life i've been striving for the life that i have looked forward to as being as near my ideal as i'm likely to find in this world it is a great thing so to cultivate the art of happiness that we can get pleasure out of the common experiences of every day the happiness habit is just as necessary to our best welfare as the work habit or the honesty or square dealing habit no one can do his best his highest work who is not perfectly normal and happiness is a fundamental necessity of our being it is an indication of health of sanity of harmony the opposite is a symptom of disease of abnormality there are plenty of evidences in the human economy that were intended for happiness that it is our normal condition that suffering unhappiness discontent are absolutely foreign and abnormal to our natures there is no doubt that our life was intended to be one grand sweet song we are built upon the plan of harmony and every form of discord is abnormal there is something wrong when any human being in this world tuned to infinite harmonies and beauties that are unspeakable is unhappy and discontented one of the most inexplicable mysteries that has ever puzzled the selfish rich is their failure to find happiness where they had expected to find it the bitterest disappointment that comes to people who have made fortunes is that the wealth did not bring the happiness which it promised or anything like it they find that the affections do not feed on material things that the heart would starve in the midst of the greatest luxuries alone they find that while money can do many things it has little power to satisfy the heart yearnings the heart hunger how many women are there in palatial homes in this country who are starving for happiness and who would gladly exchange all their luxuries for the love of a good man even if he had not a dollar in the world no selfish life can ever be happy i am acquainted with a self-made man who has made a fortune who tells me that the greatest enigma and disappointment of his life lie in the fact that although he has made millions he is not happy he says that somehow he has never been able to make many friends that people avoid him that he has never been able to get the confidence of others to any very great extent and that he is not popular even among his own neighbors he cannot understand why he is not happy for he tells me he has tried very hard to find happiness the trouble with him is that he has always done everything with reference to himself he did not mean to be selfish but the whole passion of his life has been to make money because he thought it would bring everything else that is desirable he has chosen his friends for their ability to advance his interests and has considered every step in life with reference to the effect it would have upon him what is there in it for me seems to have been the interrogation point in his life now happiness is a reflection an echo a part of what we do and think it does not depend upon our material possessions thoreau's cabin at walden pond cost only thirty-one dollars and yet thoreau was rich and happy because he had a rich mind it is impossible for the selfish greedy grasping thought the thought always centered upon one's own interest to produce a happy state of mind as it is for thistle seeds to produce wheat but if we sow helpfulness kindness unselfishness we shall reap a harvest of satisfaction harmony and happiness selfishness and real happiness never go together they are fatally antagonistic an inordinate ambition a desire to get ahead of others a mania to keep up appearances at all hazards whether we can afford it or not all these things feed selfishness that corrosive acid which eats away our possible enjoyment and destroys the very sources of happiness the devouring ambition to get ahead of others in money-making to outshine others socially develops a sordid grasping disposition which is the bane of happiness 
no man with greed developed big within him can be happy neither contentment satisfaction serenity affection nor any other member of the happiness family can exist in the presence of greed it is as impossible for a man who has been dishonest who has gotten his wealth by crushing others and by taking advantage of them to be happy as it is for a person really to enjoy himself while walking with pebbles in his shoes or while constantly being nettled with pinpricks no man can be happy who is conscious of being a drone of shirking his share in the great world's work who knows that he is taking all the good things he can get a hold of in life's great granary put there by the toilers and is putting nothing back a debauched mind that has departed from the principles of right thinking and right living has incapacitated itself for real enjoyment the only way to get the happiness that is worth while is to live a straight clean pure honest useful life there is no power in the universe that can make a human being happy along any other lines straightforward honest work a determined endeavor to do one's best an earnest desire to scatter flowers instead of thorns to make other people a little better off a little happier because of our existence these are the only recipes for real happiness no man can be happy when he despises his own acts when he has any consciousness of wrong whether of motive or act no man can be happy when he harbors thoughts of revenge jealousy envy or hatred he must have a clean heart and a clean conscience or no amount of money or excitement can make him happy End of chapter 11